<laughs> Doing great. Very Thanks well. for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, great. Okay, now I want to make sure I'm raised. My yes. Hello. You got me. Yeah. No, no. I think you're going to have to share either with Tom. I unplugged it. Sorry. Oh, uh, you, you unplugged it. Okay. It's not working, but it's okay because it's a war jazz on two. Track. Yeah, you want to? Yeah, well, that, well, we know that might work. But, uh, <laughs> no, so uh, War Jazz is the opening uh, of our show tonight. And it's track two on the album. Number one now for four straight weeks on Weekly Top 20. And for, for good reason, because it's such an excellent album. And uh, once again, major kudos to you guys. For, Thank you. I mean, all jokes, I mean, we've known each other for years. Had you guys in our studios from going back to when you guys had broke up temporarily. but. So many things have happened, so much maturity in that time. This album conveys so much more maturity from the already beautiful double album self-titled from 2012. This one, you've struck some nerves. Now this track here, I want to talk a little bit about War Jazz being one of the, the more in-your-face songs on the album. And, uh, I have a feeling that Chris Busby's all over this one. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, I know this whole album inside out, backwards. But, Chris, I, I just get this feeling that you're all over this one. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. Um, it, it actually started with Brett. I have to give kudos to Brett for bringing this one to the table. Uh, we, we are a band that always thrives on someone bringing an original idea to the table and saying, this is going to be our, our song. And uh, Brett brought the music to this one and the words to this one. It's about P PTSD, which is a, a heavy duty topic. Um, post-traumatic stress disorder, and uh, I don't want to talk to to what Brett meant the words to be, but more importantly, when we worked on the song, it, it it spoke to us as a band, and Brett's original idea sort of wrote the A section. It inspired me to write the, the sort of middle end section of the song, and it, it, it's echoing through and through. It's one of those songs, that's a, I call it a burner. Yeah. Uh, it kind of it hits you fast and hard. It's angular, it's jagged, it's got all the parts that are echoing, but at the same time, it's one of those songs that it kind of pulls you into being a person and reminding you, like, this is this is what life's about. And then, of course, Ray, his vocal performance just kind of takes it to the next level. It just it knocks it out of the park. Well, I, I love the Ray. I mean, I love that. Love that part. And each track has, I call it the moment, where there's this moment where you go, that's why these guys are awesome. And this particular part, I don't know what it was, with Ray screaming, like, at, not like in frustration. Like, well, you know, go ahead. I think that final take. Well, it probably wasn't the final take, but we, Brett and I did that maybe 15, 20 minutes, just trying to get a good scream. And yeah. I, I couldn't do it. I just, I think I, I was running out of gas, definitely, <laughs> really? from uh, doing the vocal parts for the beginning of that song. But now, was, I was just going to say, now, this, this particular album, um, you've been working on it for two years now. Yes, yes, yeah. we have. Now, was this one of the older pieces or one of the new ones? Older. Older, right? Yes, in, yeah. in that time period, yes. Yeah. Early on, early on. Yeah. But uh, like I said, the first time I heard it, the first thing that came to my mind was Chris. Uh, I just had this feeling Chris was all over this one. And um, Tom, your take on the word jazz. And what the word means? I mean, I know that there's a central meaning to each track. And it's about as we talked prior to going on the air tonight that you know, life isn't easy. I mean, you're going to have crap, you're going to have good. and. Like you said, Chris, earlier, that you have those moments where you, in each song, can have good and have bad, mm -hmm. all in one, you know, five minute, six minute piece or whatever. But Tom, what? what tell us, what do we get from this track? Um, well, I think PTSD itself is kind of topical in this day and age, and um, I think the uh, song sort of is sort of like an explosion of feelings, like when you're when you're suffering from something that, you know, something traumatic and you need to sort of let it out. I think uh, War Jazz sort of is a purging of those feelings to some degree. And uh, I think the way it's performed by all of us is uh, we all played very uh, aggressively and deliberately on this song and I think it sort of helped get out some sort of aggression that we all ourselves had. In, in, in a way, for lack of a better term, the song is in a, is a performance art, and that we were uh, e each and every one of us when we were playing it, we were really sort of punching our way through. So, yeah, yeah. And again, it's it's a uh, it's a powerful piece, and uh, according to the lyrics, it was Brett Ray. Obviously, put a lot in this. 
I did because you know I like to. When Brett was telling me about you know his feelings on the on the words, I wanted to you know do them justice. Yeah. And we did rework. I think it was the opening verse. Yeah. You know, a few different times because it just wasn't sitting right. You know, I hit it. There were more words in the first verse. You know, and it was hitting them hard because that's what we wanted to do for the feeling, and it just wasn't working out right for us. And then you know. Finally, but well, let's. I'll cut out some of the words and maybe not hit it as hard, and it just helped flow into the second verse a little better than the original version. Now, for a track like this, for a track like War Jazz, how many days does it take to put together a piece like this in the physicality? Months. I would say months. I mean, the thing that's great about us as a band is we are not afraid to bring ideas to the table and stand in a room together and sort of flush out where the song needs to go and then we demo it and we all walk away with the demo and we live with it and we talk about it and we, we actually have a hangout site that's just for the five of us and we send each other updates and sometimes it's just silly, hey, what are you doing on a Tuesday night? And then sometimes it's like, eh, I've been listening to War Jazz and I love the verse but I'm not so sure about the chorus and this part's great but this needs to be edgier. Or, so we sort of flesh it out, sometimes away from each other, but still connecting. And then we get back in the room again and, and sort of make the song happen. This song is also a great example of how we as Eklund work as a band, in that we are sometimes actually writing parts for each other. Yeah. Which, which some bands, I, I, don't, I don't know how many bands go through this, but sometimes I think when you're the guitar player, you write all your own parts. And when you're the key pl keyboard player, you write all your own parts. and. And like in this band, we actually are more open to sometimes saying, like, I have this great part that I wrote on guitar, but it actually will sound better on the keyboard. And in, and then this song has the flip of that, where I wrote a, a riff that I thought worked okay on the keyboard, but it actually sounded better on guitar and bass. And so it was one of those things that we as a band stand in the room together and sort of flesh these ideas out and say, I wrote this part, but it actually might sound better on your instrument. And, and this song just becomes the culmination of all those parts where it's like, yeah, this, this is the way the song needs to flow and needs to be. And I, I won't play the part I wrote, but you'll play it, and you'll, you'll do it better justice than I could have. Yeah. You know, um, I, I remember um, being, I guess, on location watching you guys do the last album. Ray invited me down to, a, was that Addington? Yeah, where Chris used yeah, to yeah, teach. Yeah. Yeah. Right, <clears throat> having friends. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I remember, I mean, I spent a lot of time in Addington in the last, the last week. And uh, just uh, on the side of you know, tonight's show, uh, dedicated to my father, who's uh, gotten out of the hospital. And uh, he had a, a mild setback this week, but he's, he's home, he's listening, he's watching. So it's, I love you, Dad, and uh, we're all here for you. So, uh, so this one's for you tonight. But, uh, being in an Addington to see you guys do an album, do the recording, uh, I didn't realize how complex it was watching Brett and Chris together breaking down the parts and almost like what we do when we do Jack, when we edit our interviews, when we do, um, you know, putting that stuff together. But, you know, I don't like this here, we put this there. I mean, it's obviously like not being in a band per se, but watching you guys do that was, was quite fascinating to me. It was interesting to see that album come together before. Okay. People might not understand this, but we hitch ourselves to the song. Yeah. And we basically tell the song, take us where it needs to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a very selfless, non-ego thing. And yet at the same time, we all have ourselves and we all have an ego. So we have to sometimes look at each other and push back and agree and disagree and sometimes agree to disagree about where does the song need to go. And so, like as I mentioned before, when Brett has like a ba da 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 guitar line that he wants on keyboards, I learn that part and play it for him and sort of say like, yeah, I like that. I like that, but I like this part of it and I'd like to change this part. And like we learn to grow and ebb and flow with that to a point where it's like the song tells us, yep, that's where it needs to go. That's how it has to be. And in, and in the end, Ray, Ray talked about this, you know, we're a band, so five people have to be behind it to say, we're ready to put this out for the world to hear, and we're ready to let this be public knowledge, rather than a hobby, rather than five guys sitting in a studio just making songs to go, yeah, we're into this, this sounds great. Right. So it's like a magical thing, and you're exactly right, it, it's a lot of work, it's a lot of love, it's a lot of passion, it's a lot of discourse, and sometimes it's disagreement, and, that, and that's what makes us a band. And that's and what it, makes the music so I mean, well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. In my opinion. Thanks. And, you know, I'm not blowing smoke when I say I put you guys up there with 
with my favorite band, Genesis. I, I look at you guys as one of the greatest things I've ever heard musically uh, in progressive rock. And, Thank you. And, it, and I always know when I know I'm going to like a band, and we were talking about this, Chris, when we were uh, prior to coming here, um, one of our original co-producers, John Bose, uh, back in the old days at Gag Later Archives, tried to push, at the time, and every blossom on me. And I remember going, you know, this is good, but it, 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 it doesn't, I feel like I have to put this on the back burner, and maybe I'll appreciate it like other bands down the road at the time. And once I heard As the World, and I remember thinking, I have never heard anything like this before this band. And I always tell the same story when you guys hear that as soon as I was absolutely loving you guys, ready to have you in the studio, someone emailed me back and said, sorry, we just broke up. <laughs> God, be kidding me. Why does this happen? You're not the only Sorry one. Sorry to live yeah. through that. Yeah. It's a tough phase. So, yeah. no, no. Um, <laughs> so, no, um, and, and I, I want to let you guys know you have, we have quite a bit of listeners tonight. That's great. So, so we're gonna, thank you. So Thanks for tuning we, in. Yeah, we're going to, uh, right now we have our um, uh, Gagliar Catch chat open. And if you want to ask questions to the band, once again, Tom Hyatt, Ray West, and Chris Busby in the studio. Kevin Feely, our technical advisor, is actually in the studio tonight. Kevin. Kevin. And Jack Webster, our co-producer, is in our studio. Jack. And so Jack is Jack. also uh, filming this on YouTube, and we are oh, going cool. to yeah, we're going to have this for our YouTube uh, channel, uh, YouTube.com/slash/GagLearArchives, where you can see a lot of other great performances. We had Tom Hyde and Val Dead, which what became Val Dead, yes, and uh, along with Simon Cochran, which was a great night, and also Sinak Dialogue, who recently performed downstairs in our Daggett Archives arena, if you want to call it that. So, but tonight, Eklund is in studio. We never do this. We're giving four hours to the band, and I could do that. So, whatever. It's your show. It's my show. <laughs> sure. I can get away with and it. And thank you. <laughs> yeah, and, and also big props to Kevin Feely, who uh, really did a wonderful job uh, making our home studios at uh, North 13 Studios in Brigantine even better. So, um, big props to Kevin. And We'll post photos later. Photos not right right so, so, uh, <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to do an analysis on this album and look at every track. And that one, like I said, we looked at was War Jazz. So for those of you watching online, um, if you have questions for the band, uh, like I said, message us on Facebook. Also hit our Arl Moon shout box for the Gaglet Archives chat, which we'll post again on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Archives. But for more information on Eklund, their website is located at echolin.com. You can also check them out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash echolin band. And as usual, let them know you heard it right here on the Gag the Archives. And uh, on the other side of this, we take a look at another track on the album. Stay tuned.